All right. Um, huh. This might be the first mulligan. This hand is like really appealing though. Like if we draw lands, it's going to be pretty awesome. I very rarely keep one lander. I mean, I do tend to keep a lot of one lander after I mulligan to six with the new scry rule. Now this one is, yeah, it's really tempting. We have like um, 15 lands in our deck. It's not a big deal if we miss the first, the second land drop. It's really the, s yeah, we'll re like if we draw, if there's a land on the top two card, we're in good shape. Even if we don't, even if we miss land drop next turn. Really borderline. Don't really want a mulligan and play. A six could not be much better. This hand has a lot of potential, and I feel like even if we miss the first two, or maybe even three draw step we miss, we are still in descent shape. Again, I really don't keep a lot of one lander, and I could see that being. Uh, Wrong. But I feel like keeping that one. Now the open's gonna mulligan and they are gonna crush us because they did not get greedy. <sighs> That's convenient. Looks like Merfolk. Okay, not a land, but very good card nonetheless. So if they go Forest Pass, I might just not attack with Scoundrel in fear of the 3-3 three, three, uh, Flash. Now, they can't cast it for the mana they have access to right now, though, so don't have to play around that, since it's double green. And this draw is just you know, perfect now, I guess. Very lucky. Even's not doing much. This might be a Merfolk Herald. Headwater Sentry is okay. Not really that. Um, I guess we attack with Border and Trailblazer. Just a moment of craving that thing. If I attack with everything, there's a big chance they block here and then it's kind of bad for us. If they just take it playing around our trick, it is fine too. Fruit Warrior, all right. Um, yeah, just gonna attack with everything. Happily gonna trade Scoundrel for Warrior. And uh, yeah, maybe they have some tricks, I don't know. They probably have to block even though it's not pleasant. They do have a trick. Um, all right, you got, you got my Scoundrel, nice two for one. Uh, we'll get to Heartless Pillage though, meaning we can get Spyro next turn as well as Impale. And we're still looking really good. Ooh, the main deck canopy. I don't really like doing that. There's a, really a dismount of deck that will not have any flyer, or maybe just one or two, but I don't know. I guess there's more relevant enchantment now. The White Pacifism for three mana, the Water Knot. Eh. That's probably fine. Sure. Okay, so this is gonna deal three here. And then this is gonna get impaled. And if we ever draw a land, they are just dead. Ooh, 
Ooh, ooh. Okay. All right. Uh, yeah, game's not over. The thing is, we are not forced to make trades, and anytime we want, we just stack and win. So. All right. I guess now if they just top deck the count spell, they eat that, trade here, go down to one, and they're actually in, you know, somewhat good shape. Let's just impale that, so we have good attacks. If they have nothing, they are dead the same way. And if somehow they have a count spell, we don't have to go for a bad attack into the Brontodon, and then we can resolve that. Okay, blue green Murfolk looks like a pretty good deck. They just had kind of a clunky draw after mulliganing. Aggressive urge is pretty good to keep in mind as a trick we don't really want to play into. Uh, yeah, I still don't think we are doing any sideboarding though. I think the deck is pretty good, but mostly we've been drawing very solid. Like every game we had, you know, good amount of, you know, all the lands we needed, good amount of uh, removal and creatures, nice curve, while we've seen this amount of opponent flooding, mulliganing, having somewhat clunky draws. So, yeah, I mean, sometimes you just run well, I guess. But so far, none of the game felt difficult or anything. I like this hand. I mean, it's not insane, but it has a solid 3-drop, reinvol on cheap reinvol, recover, blood letter is nice, so, alright. Okay, sure. <laughs> if they put Curiosity on that thing and knows a creature, so we can mutiny, we'd be in quite a bit of trouble. Looks like Gavin's just screwed here after mulliganing. We're getting really lucky. Deep Root Warrior, all right. Uh, <laughs> second Mutiny. This card, yeah, I'm happy we're not running three. It's been kind of clunky. I think it's it has to do with the fact that uh, we have a lot of removal and a lot of our open had clunky draws where they weren't able to play a lot of things, actually. But I think in general it's still pretty good. Now it's true that it's been uh, kind of clunky so far. I've had I've had mutiny being a little bit better than it was, that it than than, than it has been this draft. Also, we kind of drew two mutiny kind of every game almost. So yeah, there is that. Uh, I think this is gonna kill us if we don't top deck. Uh, so this is gonna kill that. If we had access to double red, I could see waiting to use double mutiny with a two-power creature to kill that, but as things stand right now, I think we just killed one one. If Again, if we had another mountain, I would try to wait and double mutiny. Um, yeah, I guess it's gonna be, hmm, the problem is, I guess technically we're not losing the race really here. Let me just check, they go take 2, go down to 11, then we have 7 power on board. We go down to six. I guess unless you have a pump spell, we're winning this race. So we don't have to necessarily top deck a removal. This is what I'm checking. Because otherwise you could, I could see going for an attack, then Zealot, recover the thing they ate. And try to um, draw into a removal. 
but I think we're just winning this race unless they have a pump spell. We might not plan play Dusk Legion Z lot, by the way. Because this puts us dead to aggressive urge that we've seen game one. We're still gonna lose if they have a plus two, plus two or more pump spell. But at least not playing Z lot means we're not dead to urge. Yeah, I like playing around Urge here. It limits the amount of thing they have that could kill us. I would cast that without any, you know, if we could just draw. Basically cycle, but you need a target, so... Now again, we are still dead if they have plus two, plus two. Which they just top deck the land for. Uh... But yeah, nothing we could have do, done around that. All right. Okay. Um, still not changing anything. One with a win, unless they put on a hexproof creature, is not great against us. Like we have a lot of removal in this deck, but uh, worked out here, I guess. <laughs> Even if they have only one urge or only one way to add one power in their deck, I, I still feel I still feel like you don't play Z lot. And there's more card than just urge. There is the one Jade Bearer, one one for one green puts a counter on a Merfolk. There is the Merfolk Lord for blue green plus one plus one to every Merfolk. There is I think possibly up to I don't know. I don't really know actually, but possibly up to five cards, if maybe even more, that would give plus one plus one exactly. There is the urge, the lord, the jade bearer, and probably two or three other things I'm not thinking about right now. So, yeah, would definitely uh, try to play around that. Even if we hadn't seen the urge, it's probably right. I think if we hadn't seen the urge, I would not have played around it, but I think it would still have been right to play around these and again, probably three, four other things that just give plus one, plus one. I think we'll just, uh, hmm. No, actually, we're gonna grab that planes now because we might wanna go blood letter into bishop right away. Because there's an argument to just play Swamp and next Swamp and next turn you go Swamp and uh, you try to see whether you draw red or not, but I think this is going to grab a planes anyway. And there's a chance again we want to curve out and just be able to cast Bishop on the fourth turn, so yeah, pretty big chance we just cast a Bishop, especially against Merfolk. They don't have to, they don't tend to have a lot of removal. And you kind of want to win the tempo race. So if they just play, you know, a random 2-2 two, two or 3-3. Three, three. I guess it's not ideal if they play the 2-2 two, two, for 3 that gives you a token. Because it's not super good in the first place. And if they kill the bishop somehow, they get another 1-1 one, one X-proof. So hopefully this is not the card they have here. No, it's going to be Scoundrel. That's completely fine. Uh, yeah, definitely going to steal that. Or rather, eat it, make my dude larger, and continue the race. So it's power, right? Never actually attack with that thing. Oh, it's target vampire too. Yeah, I forget about that. Very often you just pump itself, otherwise it dies though. <laughs> but you can target something else if you'd like to. Like a flyer, if you want to finish them somehow. <laughs> So it's going to be either a 3-3 three, three, or you can make that into a 4-4, four, four, but most likely it's not going to be very good. Alright. It 
if they path with three mana open, it's like almost 100% sure they have a bounce, draw a card, instant speed if you control a merfolk, or, you know, even Depths of Desire or anything like that. So we are not going to attack with Conquistador. We're just going to attack with the, the fly if this, you know, if this happens. Huh. Okay. Well, I guess now we can attack. Uh, sure. Let's, uh, if we attack, they could go for a double block, I guess. And then we get two for one. I don't really want them to block though, especially when we have Pyromancer coming next turn. I think we just go for an attack like that. And if they just take it, so this is gonna boost itself, so we don't trade with the crappy 1-1. One, one. If they just take it down to three, they are really in trouble next turn because, oh, it's down to four, fuck. <laughs> if it was down to three, then just attack with that. No matter what th they do, it's gonna be one. I mean, yeah, one damage, so they go down to two and then we burn them. Looked like this worked out though. All right, sweet. Yeah, deck worked out pretty well. We had good draws, uh, but I think it was solid, so I don't feel like, you know, don't feel uh, like we've been stealing people with a bad deck. Um, next draft I upload, I don't know when it's going to be, maybe next Wednesday or Thursday. I'll try to give you, a, I mean, record another draft in the middle of the week. Otherwise, again, feel free to uh, follow me on Twitch. I'm doing a bunch of uh, streaming and you can also watch the VODs if, uh, if you'd like to see more content. Uh, yeah. But thanks for watching, guys, and see you soon for uh, another draft, most likely.